as part of our Holy Week observance, we'll be doing a version of the Tenebrae. It's a service of light and darkness. And we gather beneath Christ's cross here to grow in our thankfulness to God for all Jesus' suffering and death mean to us. In the fourth century, a solemn observance of the Lord's Supper known as Tenebrae was celebrated. The service involved the lighting and extinguishing of candles as a reminder of the darkness that covered the earth after the passion and crucifixion of our Savior. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins in your own body on the tree so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you now and in the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God is light, in whom there is no darkness. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and we love darkness rather than light. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross change it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in that old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away 
where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Let us turn to the Lord our God, who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O Lord Jesus, as we distance ourselves physically, draw us near to one another spiritually and emotionally. As we remember your death and burial and look forward to celebrating your resurrection and new life, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you gave us a new commandment, to have love for one another. Help us find ways to do just that, to love. Unite us, your church, in a commitment to humble service for your people and the world. Give us the continued imagination that we need to live out your commandment to love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, your arrest, trial, torture, and death melted the hearts of many, from Pilate and his wife to Joseph of Arimathea, from the thief upon the cross to the centurion who stood at its foot, your courage and forgiving ways, even as you died, spoke into the hearts of many. Dear Jesus, melt our hearts still today as we live in the midst of these long days of boredom, fear, suffering, sickness, and even death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love on this day in which we stand at the foot of the cross, remind us that you hung upon the cross because of your love for us. You died that we might live. Open our eyes and hearts to your grace and strengthen us in our faith as we wait with your disciples during these hours in which you lay dead in the sealed tomb. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, you who conquered death once and for all, hear our prayers today and every day in mercy and in love. Amen.
The following is a reading from the book of Matthew and depicts the final day of Jesus. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, and he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, your Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside of the, in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with him. But he denied it. Before all of them saying, I do, know not, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor.
Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations are being made against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered greatly because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, And they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, They stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, 
This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, and he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lala b'tzaktani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. And at once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. When Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. 
He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore we command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Jesus, remember. 